Everybody. Welcome back to Unsung Gems. My name is Z Garcia, and today I'm going to be going over five games that begin with the letter U that I think deserve a little bit more love. Why are these games overlooked? I'm not sure. They are interesting, engaging games that we're going to be talking about today. So, you know what? Let's just go ahead and jump right into them. Here it is. My first pick for today is a game called U.S. Telegraph. And I will admit it's a little bit of a cheat because this is a reprint of a game called Attica that does have about 5,000 votes on uh, BGG. Meaning 5,000 people, more than that, have rated the game, have interacted with the page and rated it. This new one, however, doesn't really seem to have garnered a lot of attention. And the original one has been out of print for a long time. It's a very hard game to get. It is a very hard game to get. But now, if you were interested in that, you can pick up this US Telegraph version of the game. Very different theme, and some people might not like the new one, but the gameplay, I would say, is even better. The game is more user-friendly, and uh, it's just a pleasure to play this game. Fantastic three-player game, especially, in which you are taking buildings, you are, you are picking them up from your own stack, you know which ones you're getting, just not in the order in which you're getting them, and then you'll be drafting cards and playing those cards to build your buildings onto a shared space. So very quickly, you're going to be running to other players. You want to be building things in advantageous spots so you can earn discounts from the landscape itself and earn bonuses by building next to your own buildings in connected groups that make sense together. If you connect, uh, or rather, if you build all of your buildings first, you win the entire thing. Or if you connect two of these specific locations that are on the board, then you also win. So it's both a race to build them all, efficiently, and a connection game. And the other players uh, have to make sure they're looking out for you being sneaky and making a run for something and quickly connecting to a spot they did not think you could make it to and ending the game prematurely, winning the entire thing. It's very clever. I really like the way this game works. It's about ticket to ride level, maybe a hair. Uh, more, uh, you know, intricate than that, but uh, one that you should not overlook if you enjoy family-style games uh, and you want something that feels a little bit different while still being familiar enough to quickly be able to get into it. So that is U.S. Telegraph. Next up, I'm talking about Ultimate Warriors, with a Z, of course, because, you know, why not? And this one is a very interesting big group fighty kind of game in which you are trying to take down your opponents, uh, score that killing blow for an extra bonus of victory points. You're going to be moving around an arena, you're going to be playing cards, attacking each other. To me, it kind of feels like King of Tokyo, with the monsters and the movement and the very, the very you know, direct confrontation, meets Adrenaline, uh, which is kind of like a first-person shooter sort of thing, and you want to do that killing blow. This one has that same feeling, where every time you're, you're scored a hit against, you'll give an opponent one of your tokens, but the one who does that final hit is going to be scoring several of them for a single hit. Really dynamic game. Very engaging, nice fantasy theme going on in this one. Easy to manipulate, and of course you can play the different characters and find the one that has a play style uh, that, that, that you like the most, you know, that, that, that speaks to you. Their special abilities, their configuration is slightly different, right? So this is one that did not get a lot of traction after it came out. I think part of that was coming out in the shadow of some games like it, like King of Tokyo. Uh, but I would suggest you look into it. If King of Tokyo for you is one you enjoy, but you want something that can handle more players and still feels the same way, maybe you play with, you know, kids, maybe slightly older kids who are into the oh, clashing monsters in an arena thing, which is kind of how King of Tokyo feels in a way, then this is a good one for that. It can play more players and it still has that fun timing element of making sure you're in the right place at the right time, defending when you need to, but attacking and dealing those blows. So Ultimate Warriors is one you want to check out. My third pick for today is a game called Uluru, and this is the uh, 
the overseas printing of it, I know that there's been a printing in English called Pelican Cove. That's kind of hard to find. They're both, I guess, technically kind of hard to find. I haven't seen that edition. So I'm going by the name I know it by, Uluru. And this one is a, a puzzle game. It's a, a real-time puzzle game in which you are presented with conditions. Uh, this Certain pelican does not want to be, you know, blue pelican does not want to be next to the green pelican. The red pelican wants to be across from the purple pelican. There's all these things revealed, and then you have a certain amount of time, as does everyone else, simultaneously, to arrange your pelicans around this sort of structure. Once you're out of time, you're done, and you check if you've successfully achieved all these different things. Scoring points for the ones you did, and not scoring the ones that you missed or couldn't pull off. And that's the game. You play a few rounds of that. It is so engaging. It is so thinky and fun. You can change the level of difficulty based on which cards you choose to shuffle into the deck. It kind of feels like Picture Perfect. A very new game in which you are setting people up around a table and taking a photograph of them, and it's the same thing. They have hidden conditions in that game where they want to be a certain spot around the table, next to or not next to someone, all these things. So this feels to me like a very stripped back, basic, you know, just, just kind of getting to the absolute puzzle of it version of Picture Perfect. It's one I've enjoyed for many years. It's one that... I will never get rid of because it is so different from anything else in my collection. So again, you have to know that this is the kind of thing for you. It's a game that can absolutely be divisive. It's a puzzle. There's not a lot else there. You are presented with traps and things you need to satisfy and you need to do the best you can with limited time. It's just you against you, really. It's fully solitary. You're scoring against other people for the sake of seeing how you did, but that's really it. So if you like that and you don't know this game, you should definitely track this one down. I, I rate this very highly. But if you don't like that idea, if you don't, you know, if you don't think you'd enjoy a game which is fully a thinky puzzle for three rounds and then the game's over, then yes, it's probably not your thing because there's, there's nothing hidden about this game. That's what it is. But boy, it's a good one. Uluru. There you go. My next pick is a game called Urbania. Urbania here, or Urbania, I guess, uh, is a very early Simone Luciani design. Uh, long before Simone Luciani was a very big designer, very well-known designer. This one is interesting. It's, it's a fairly light game in which you are going to be building up a city. There's a bunch of buildings unbuilt on a big grid, and on your turn you will take some cards or you will spend some of those to build the building next to something already built. So you flip it over, you score some points, you will advance how many, how populous each type of building is on the table. And then a couple of wrinkles on top of that, you can hire specialists. You'll keep those people in front of you, and while you have them, you score bonus points at the end of every round. Someone is to hire that person away from you. But their cost continues to go up each round or each time they're purchased, every time they move. So that's interesting. There's some hidden goals at the end of the game. You can score three of those throughout the game and put those face down, score them at the end. I love end game scoring. I want, I want some things to be hidden. Now, the game is not a looker. I don't think it's an attractive game whatsoever. But it plays in a very interesting way. It's, it's thinky but not too thinky. It's, uh, it's got a little bit of a positional element to it. It, again, has that card flop, kind of like Ticket to Ride. I, I mentioned it earlier. This is another one that sort of feels like a Ticket to Ride Plus. I would say this is a little bit thinkier than U.S. Telegraph, but it's in the same realm, you know. Uh, and it's just really overlooked. It's one that didn't get any traction, didn't go anywhere. So, Ur Urbania or Urbania, if you are looking for a uh, perhaps a forgotten Simone Luciani game, you've enjoyed some of their more recent designs, and you want to go back to something a little simpler, but still engaging, you want to look into that one. And then my last pick for today kind of sounds like Urbania or Urbania. This is Urbino. Urbino is an abstract game for two players. A wooden, gorgeously produced, fully abstract two-player game. 
This one has a couple of weird wrinkles I haven't really seen in other abstract games. It's a game in which you are building a city, you are building groups of buildings, and they come in three values worth one, two, or three points. But on your turn, there are two, at the beginning of the game, you'll set up two architects on the table, and on your turn, you move one to anywhere else you want, and then you can build a building wherever those two architects intercept. Meaning any spot drawn from where they are, going in a straight line, orthogonally or diagonally, where the two paths would meet. You can put a building there, with a couple of restrictions. And then your opponent will can move one of them, and anywhere those two meet, boop, they can put a building there. And you are continuing to do that until the game is over, and then scoring any district, uh, which is a, a grouping of buildings, in which you are both present. You have to both be present. Whoever has the majority there will score their own buildings in that area. Very different from a lot of abstract games. It gives me shades of Santorini. It gives me shades of Targi because of the interception thing. Um, but it really doesn't feel like either one of those. It's its own thing. Yeah, it has a couple more rules than some other abstract games. The, the clarity and simplicity of a lot of abstracts which is something I very much enjoy in them, isn't, isn't quite here. But it's clever and different. So, you know, for someone who is a collector of abstract games, if you enjoy having access to many of them, and you've started to find the games you are uh, discovering repeating themselves, I think Urbino is a good one, because I don't think it will give you that feeling. I think it will feel wholly its own thing. So, there you go. And that's it, everybody, for me. Five picks, very different picks today, that uh, you should perhaps look into. Maybe you never got around to seeing, maybe passed you by, or just, you know, was before your time and you want to go back and, and check it out. So there you go. Stick around for more Unsung Gems. I'll be wrapping this series up pretty soon. I think I'll be combining some letters as we get to the end of the alphabet. But uh, that's going to do it. My name is Z Garcia. I appreciate you, and I'll see you on the next one.